I have two pieces of wood I want to start sculpting and I'm not sure what this one's going to be so what I'm going to do is get the bark off of it and start to see what kind of grain patterns I have and see if I can do uh, something. I'm thinking something with a kind of spiraling semi-organic hollow in the inside. There was a lot of leaves in there. I think a squirrel had made a nest out of it. So, let's see what I can do. It should be interesting. And then the next piece, not sure what I want to do yet, is going to be this large chunk of oak. Fairly wide. Looks uh, like it oh, came, came off pretty easy. The bark's already separated. So, have to come up with some ideas for this too as well. Pretty thick. Most of full hands with. So I've got the bark off of it, and I started to clean out some of the deteriorated material inside of the tree. Get an idea of what I'm going to be working with here. I know I'm going to want this to be completely smooth, so I'm going to take off this burl, that branch, that branch, and it looks like when they felled this tree and dropped it from the boom truck looks like it landed and cracked. I have a crack there and I have a crack here. I think what I want to do is go ahead and cut this off and then I'm going to have this piece come up with what's remaining. Have this piece just come up and then curve all the way up into here. So just going to let the tree talk to me and see if I can put some life back into this tree. This is a perfect example of what happens to a tree when it's improperly pruned. The history of this particular oak tree uh, is at the top of Queen Anne Hill in downtown Seattle. And the branches were starting to encroach on the property. So the property owner hired some guys with some chainsaws to crawl up there and cut them down. And they did not trim the limbs properly, which caused the tree to become diseased and then ultimately rot out in all these branch areas. So we're going to try to use their mistakes in tree pruning to turn this into something beautiful. Okay, I think I have it laid out how I want to do this. So, what I want to do is I want this to spiral up with these spires that are going to come up. So, what I want to do is start it way over here and have this piece come up. And I want to get this real nice burl. Um, grain pattern in it and I want this to come all the way around mm -hmm. and then come up and then we'll do the same thing on this side this is going to come all the way around and then come up and then this one will come all the way around and then up. So I should have a twist when I get done with this. So 
So what I'm going to do is take and cut out this section and then the other two sections just like it. So in effect, I should be able to get this thing to, to twist up and then have the three spirals um, pretty much like that is how I'm envisioning it. I hope um, the wood lets me do it. But uh, I'm starting to see something really pretty shaping up. Okay, we've got it to the point where I think I know what I want to do with that. So I'm going to let that sit and then um, still drying out a little bit. Now that i got all the bark off, it'll dry and it'll start to um, get a nice patina as the oak starts to oxidize and the tannins start to change color. So I'm going to leave that for a little while while I um, sharpen some of my blades. And I'm going to move on to this while it's still dry out and it's not raining, which is rare in Pacific Northwest. So for this one to get started, what I need to do, I think, is I'm going to try to get this leveled out so I can get an idea of a couple things. One, make sure there's no cracks in it. Two, I want to check the grain and see um, what kind of grain patterns I have to work with. It's going to make a difference on whether I turn this into a piece of furniture or if I turn it into another sculpture, which I'm kind of wanting to do like an eagle's head or a, a, even a lion's head or a, another piece to put into a larger piece of furniture since I've got such a width on this. So what I'm going to do is go at it with uh, my electric planer. This is the Makita 1900B for four inch, four and a half inch, four and a quarter. Um, and this one I have carbide blades in it. I don't do the high speed steel. Um, carbide blades. Um, this thing comes in handy. So what I'm going to do is get this thing knocked down and we'll see what kind of grain it has. I've got a little bit of tear out here from when the tree fell. Um, fell down in an ice storm so try to get as much of that off as we can and then like anyone that likes to barbecue I put the wood table down and a backstop and when my planer runs over this I'm gonna spit all my shavings out here and then I'm gonna collect them and I'm gonna do one of two things one I'm gonna throw it in the barbecue to smoke some meat two I am gonna boil them up and sanitize them pack them into a brick mold and I'm going to inoculate them with the mushroom mycelium that we have from the last project on another video. You'll have to check that out. So Let's see what she looks like. Okay, so I've got my first little wedge piece cut out and it's starting to shape up. I'm just using my cordless sawzall with the pruning wood. Um, I just hit that with the grinder and resharpened it so it's eating pretty fast which is good um, so you can't really see the lines but this piece is going to then come up and around and I'm going to continue to just work this around and uh, separate some of these and carve them and round them out and then <clears throat> we'll hit them with the flapper disc and the grinder and maybe even the, the chain saw disc give it some more profile so I'm going to keep cutting I'm out here in this rain it's pretty muddy, but hey, we're having fun. Taking the chisels to this, and I've gotten as much, almost about as everything that I want to offer here, and what I want to do now is kind of start to see if I can't shape some of this and then start taking some of the inside out, and to do that, <clears throat> I'm going to use this chainsaw blade. This is the Lancelot from King Arthur um, Company. So it's very dangerous. It's not plugged in. Um, and I have some ear hearing safety. And I'll be sure to put the guard on it. I usually don't use my guard, but with this, um, I definitely uh, will. And what I'm going to do is just knock it down a little bit, and we're going to get really close to then coming in with a flapper disc wheel and starting to sand it down and shape it with that and then I'll finish uh, with the random orbital and hand sanding it before I s 
figure out what my finish is going to be. And this is the finished sculpture. I'm going to put a finish on it. Play with some of the spare parts and see if I can do an ammonia fumigation or um, maybe a stain just to finish. I'm not sure, but. But I think for as far as this project's concerned, I think I'm done with it. So, it was fun, and I enjoyed it, and I look forward to the next one. So, I'll put this video up, and if anybody's interested, I'll be happy to share some ideas, and hope that anybody can get out there and carve your own sculptures. Cheers!